Hi, my name is Nick Richardson. I'm from the Insights People. We're a global leader in kids uh, market research. I'm here today to talk about TV and audio consumption um, for this next generation of consumers and of course, children across the planet. So just as an introduction to ourselves, we call ourselves the global leader. Well, quite frankly, there's no one who can compete with us. We survey nearly 300,000 children from around the world. Um, and we're very excited to announce that we are currently in China, India and Australia, but from quarter one next year, we'll be launching in Japan, South Korea, Indonesia and the Philippines. This is in addition to countries such as Canada, US, Mexico, Brazil, UK, France, Germany, Italy, Spain and Russia. What we do as well is very unique because with the changes in legislation with children, you can't get real time data because of the changes with GDPR and copper legislation. What we do is survey children on a continual basis. In every country we operate in, we survey 400 children who are between the ages of 3 and 18 every single week. And these children are age and gender representative. And that means we can make all of this data back uh, to our clients in real time. So essentially in each country, we survey about 21,000 children a year. And what does this do? Well, essentially we have a unique methodology because we fundamentally believe that all parts of the children's ecosystem is collected. If a child has $5, they don't just look at things from a toy perspective, they look at all of the, they've got all of these different options which they can purchase. Likewise, if they have an hour free in their day, they will then decide what they're going to spend that time doing. Will it be online gaming or will it be doing uh, playing sports uh, or, or taking part in uh, hobbies and uh, other interests. And what we've done is we've created a system which allows you to understand what's going on in the ecosystem through our monthly insight reports, which has expert commentary. It allows you to track through our uh, award-winning portal uh, what's going on. We can then help you define your specific target audience and even look at your competitors' audience as well, identify opportunities, and ultimately then build an engagement plan um, for, you, for you to grow share and grow engagement. So just to give you an idea of how much the world is changing, you know, we've seen significant change over the last year and COVID has affected us all. And in particular has really affected the lives of children. But even more so than that, it's really affected them as their opinions are forming and those attitudes, behaviors and con uh, consumption which children had, the longevity of the effects on COVID will be something that we don't know for years to come. But if we look now in terms of uh, children listening to uh, podcasts. We've seen a huge growth in this. I'm really seeing how it, it, it's really starting to boom. And one of the reasons for this is a huge increase in technology such as smart speakers. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So understanding the kids ecosystem. Well, if we look here now in terms of um, smart speakers in particular, we can see around about a third of Chinese children actually have access to a smart speaker. And this is really interesting because what we're starting to see is how the, this next generation we call Generation Speak. And what I mean by that is, you know, I'm 38, I'm used to controlling a device with my, with my fingers, I call myself Generation Type. Then along came Generation Swipe, who prefer to use uh, their devices by controlling their fingers by touch. And now we've got a generation who not only are used to controlling uh, devices by their voice, but actually prefer to. We also see now huge increases in wearable tech, meaning now that they're even more constantly connected uh, out of the home uh, as well as well as in the home. And with all of this choice, it's very difficult for brands to uh, brands and media platforms to um, to engage with children because there's so much more options available for them. So we've seen decreases in linear TV, increases in uh, you know different uh, social media platforms, and of course gaming has been significant growth. And as children are now spending more and more time in this digital ecosystem, which is becoming far more complicated, far more connected, and far more fragmented. What we're now seeing is how lines are blurring. A few years ago, social media would very much sit over here, online retail would sit over here, and gaming would sit here. Now what we're starting to see is really how there's a merge between all of these. Social media uh, is increasing having gaming built into it, and also uh, direct to purchase shopping, uh, social shopping elements. We're also seeing how uh, platforms such as Fortnite allow children to watch films, uh, chat with one another, 
and of course game as well. So it's really interesting now to start to see how everything is blurring, um, which is definitely one of the trends that we um, really see resonating uh, over 2021. And the gaming revolution, as children spend more and more time there, we're seeing huge increase in, in sports such as esports or gaming platforms such as esports. And that's re um, rose about 25, 26% uh, in our Chinese data in the past two months. And of course, that's driven by two ways. Esports was growing, and in many ways, COVID has essentially just accelerated certain trends, such as the move to digital and gaming and esports. But of course, with less and less traditional sports being allowed, uh, as we've all been in elements of lockdown over the last year, um, you know, that, that has also had an impact. So tracking kids' attitudes, behavior, and consumption habits is something that we do as well. So as I said before, you know, around about a third have access to uh, smart speakers, 45% are listening to audio books, which has been a huge growth area that we've seen in our data. And we work with a number of publishing clients and we've been really helping them understand what's going on and navigating and helping them identify opportunities. And as I mentioned before, it's not just the fact that Generation Speak um, are using their voice um, to, to, um, to control their devices. It's the fact that increasingly, and this percentage is growing um, on, a, on a monthly basis, is the amount of children that really want to prefer um, to control their devices with their voice. And that is uh, extremely um, uh, significant with younger children too. So when we talk about how we work with our clients, we're very proud to work with clients from across the board. People such as Australian Broadcast Corporation, BBC, Amazon, uh, Disney, and Formula One, Kraft, Mattel, Lego, Warner Brothers, and people like Nintendo. So we work with organizations across the board. And these organizations will always use us in different ways. Some will use us to help plan their advertising and media strategy and inform their activation. Some will look at it to plan content, if that's content syndication, uh, or purchasing content, or even content marketing. Brand licensing and consumer products is a huge part of what we do. Marketing strategy and looking to plan uh, more long term. Product development and product management. And of course, selling uh, and influencing people if it's retailers or from a media perspective. So we try to build a solution which really does provide that 360 viewpoint. But then also in our portal, we're now building a series of tools which allow clients to build that. And we're really excited to be launching our advertising and media planning tool which allows uh, brands to compare uh, TV, linear, AVOD, gaming, social, uh, and also um, other uh, media spaces alongside each other. And our expert team and data scientists have created something absolutely fantastic there. And we're also building a licensing tool which tracks the performance of brands and IP, essentially using a purchase funnel, which looks at the performance across all of those different layers. So when we look at um, podcast listeners, whilst kids in India favor comedy and education podcast, we see the differences. And the beauty of what we do is we can compare countries by countries, and we can also break down the data on a regional basis. Um, so in the UK, for example, a lot of data which typically happens in the UK will just be based around London. And actually what we've done is made sure we include Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and different regions in the UK. And we're normally within one or 2% of that from a population perspective, making sure it's representative. And that's a real key element, especially as we're in these interesting times at the moment, while we're still seeing a huge surge of globalization with platforms such as Fortnite having a huge global reach, but we're starting to see more and more unique behaviors on this localized perspective, almost in this global uh, economy, which is swinging between the two. Increasingly, some parts of our lives are more global and some parts of our lives are becoming more, um, more locally uh, and, and more regionalized as well. And again, household influence, what we've seen uh, really interesting during the pandemic in particular is how children's influence on the household is increasing and increasing. And that one of the reasons for this, we believe, is just the fact that children and parents are spending a lot more time together. We're starting to see the re-emergence of family meals as there's less time commuting for parents. And that ability for children and parents to talk and communicate with each other is providing children with that opportunity to influence. In fact, sometimes we refer to children as the CEO of the household, the chief entertainment officer. So looking to engage stakeholders, 
Um, you know, what's also interesting is we look at all of these different parts of the kids' ecosystem. And one of the areas we also look at is in regard to uh, their licensing and their purchase trends in regard to uh, different elements. We look at gaming, we look at TV, we look at film, we look at sports, and we look at YouTubers. And what we can see here is kids in China are significantly more likely to purchase merchandise related to their favorite TV show uh, compared, to, uh, compared to other countries. So you can really start to see there in terms of you know, licensing opportunities that we see and the importance of TV within this digital centric um, uh, society that we live in for, for brands uh, to engage and to influence children. And again, we can start to see increases there across music as well. So this is just a very, very small uh, snapshot of what we do. And we are really, really excited to be working closer uh, with, with you all and to be expanding into, into APAC over 2021. What we've done is we've also produced our future forecast, which has got 10 predictions of things that we believe we're going to see in 21. This is free to download. And in addition to that, you can get a sneak preview of our portal and see some of the data and some of our videos and everything else. So to go and have a look at that, go to kidsinsights.com forward slash future forecast. And I very much look forward to meeting you all in person as we come out of COVID in the very near future. Thank you again. Goodbye.